In the Hamilton Yearbook of 1911, I read the sentence, there lies a mighty power in the fact that the traditions of a small college are personal. What was true 100 years ago, 200 years ago, is true today. And then our first sight of the chapel, in its classic dignity and beauty, with its goose quill weather vane delicately poised as if to write on Earth's campus the words and the deeds of many generations of college youth and their instructors. Courtney Hughes Fenn, class of 1887. I think we believe in inspiring students to discover who they are, to relish who they are, to challenge who they are, um, and then to go out and be who they are. They challenged us and demanded our best efforts as we learned to think and to analyze and to make judgments for ourselves. We respected them and came to realize that they respected us. Charles T. Bay's class of 1953. Stories in terms of how they understand this stuff. Our friends, what is the social context of this world? As it's fully aware of it. If you can be your own person, make your own decisions, see outside the box. Why is that important for Durkheim? Join things together that most people would never see as connected and show that you can write more compellingly speak more compellingly than those around you, you're gonna do better. I don't care what field you're in. <laughs> yeah, she's got a little bit of advantage. My door and the door of every faculty member swings open for your entrance. Be not awed, be not dismayed, but come to us with your troubles. Come to us with your triumphs. Come to us as friends. Winton Tolls. Class of 1928. Uh, Milton with Margie Dixon. Oh. Yeah. And then, uh, there are opportunities to really get close to students, and some of them, they end up almost being members of your family. Oftentimes, when students come in, there's a certain lack of confidence with respect to their vision of what they're capable of. We can encourage that in the classroom, but I think the connections that we make with them outside of the classroom really reinforces the message that we, we believe in them. We believe that they're capable, oftentimes, of more than they even believe they're capable of. We came to get an education in the liberal arts, or to define it more simply, to learn how to live. Lewis Brockway, class of 1917. This is one of the most free wilderness areas left, certainly on the East Coast. The trees and the weather and the sky helps them feel a part of nature, feel a part of science, feel a part of history. Can't try and make it all the way here. <laughs> the isolation was like a magnifying lens, concentrating the beauty we saw until it seared our souls. When the snows came, we might awaken to brilliant sun and unearthly silence. W. Robert Connor, class of 1956. The hill is this real special little island because it allows us to build deeper and more meaningful relationships with the students. Faculty and students come and work together, really sharing across the table. Some tough questions, some complicated answers, and the messiness that is uh, learning. Every year I get excited because I see the changes in my students. From day one, they don't know a, a word of Chinese to the end of the semester. They started talking to me in Chinese. By senior year, they're writing their thesis in Chinese, and they're thinking in Chinese at a very sophisticated level. 
That is the growth I see in each, every one of my students. We can truly say that our teachers were superb coaches and that our coaches were outstanding teachers. John B. Howley, class of 1939. I love recruiting strong, confident, brilliant women who want to win games. We encourage them to directly communicate with each other. We create an atmosphere where accountability is normal. Take them out of their comfort zone, push them to their potential and beyond. But they know that we love them. You know, they know that we're hard on them because they, we believe that they can do it. Our reverence for Hamilton what he has done for us and what he has enabled us to do with our lives will live with us forever. William Yeomans, class of 1955. These are my kids. Hello. A lot of kids. When you are up here, you are in another world. It's another chapter of their lives, and that's what I tell them. Then, Two years go by and all of a sudden I see a rose. And then their senior year, they bloom. Oh my God, they bloom into beautiful people. And they go on. I think there's an element of Hamilton that is with me all the time. It really is a uh, story of uh, people willing to engage and uh, get in touch and remain in touch. And, uh, you know, I still remember when Professor Wertimer would always say, welcome home whenever you'd come back. Sid was a very optimistic, up kind of person. He looked upon college as not just in the subjects you take and the education you get, but in the kind of person you become and the kind of service that you're going to be willing to give. The generous culture, the genial friendships, the inspiring association with superior minds. Prepare the coming citizen for useful and influential work. Charles R. Kingsley, class of 1878. The more I consider the past of Hamilton, the more certain I am that we have before us a shining future. And that has to do, of course, with people. It has to do with the students we enroll, teachers who teach them, with all of the alumni and parents and trustees who believe in us and who support us and who make it possible for us to do the work we're doing. The richest possessions of the institution are the multitude of lives, past and present, that would never have been educated if the college had not been here. The intelligences that would not have been enlarged by learning and literature. The spirits that would have not been quickened, but for her. The unrecorded influences for the betterment of a thousand communities. To which her graduates. To which her graduates have gone. Elie Root, class of 1864.